Today we are looking at the MSI GeForce GTX 750Ti Twin Frozer Overclocked Edition graphics card. Okay, on the back of the box it's got some information of the things that this graphics card has within it, the military class 4 components, etc, etc. Okay, so let's quickly take this out of the box and see what we get inside. Okay, we have this black, nice black MSI branded box. Inside you get your standard driver CD and you get information on their dual BIOS and a quick user guide and obviously the graphics card itself. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about the specifications of this graphics card. It has a core clock of 1085 MHz, a boost clock of 1163 MHz, has 2 GB of GDDR5 memory, clocked at 5400 MHz effectively. I should say that this memory is hugely underclocked really because it is Samsung memory that is rated for 6000 MHz. So it has a 128 bit bus and 640 CUDA cores. The max GPU power is officially 60 watts, but is actually 75 watts from the PCIe Express slot. The shroud itself for the card is made of plastic, though it does feel pretty solidly made, and it does have this nice metal support bracket that make, keeps it nice and sturdy. It features their Twin Frozer cooler, fourth generation, that has two 100mm fans that blow directly onto the heatsink. And it has two heat pipes underneath, one thicker than the other, which for someone with OCD like me is quite annoying. This is a dual slot card. The card dimensions are 250 by 128 by 37 millimeters. It features a DVI-D, VGA and HDMI connectors. It features a switch to choose between the UEFI enabled BIOS or the legacy BIOS. Hi guys, okay, so let's talk a little bit more about this graphics card. First of all, this is the first of the new Maxwell architecture graphics cards from NVIDIA. Uh, it's called the GM107, that's a GeForce Maxwell 107, that's their name for it. It has 1.87 billion transistors. Yeah, isn't that impressive? It is still built on the 28 nanometer manufacturing process, the same as the previous Kepler architecture. Uh, I should say in the future, it will be shrunk down to 20 nanometers, so like, the 880 maybe or something like that will be made on that smaller manufacturing process whereas this is it features a huge huge revamp so this is not the same as the Kepler at all if there's lots of differences in here I'm not going to go into those right now so yeah the 20 nanometer process isn't it isn't quite ready yet. it's not quite proven I don't think Nvidia really want to whisk it just yet so this is the 28 nanometer process used on this graphics card but with huge huge changes done to it to make it much more power efficient and much quieter. Uh, the overall aim of Maxwell is a, an increase in performance per watt so yeah low low power consumption. Okay so let's talk about the actual card itself it features the, the MSI's twin frozer cooler it features two 100 millimeter fans right here you see it's pretty standard if you've ever seen one of these yeah it's exactly the same the cooler. I should say that this this is overkill. Something like this on a card like this it is it's pretty much overkill. Which is strange because there is no external power connector in this at all, anywhere. It just uses the power from the PCIe slot here, which is only up to 75 watts. And there's only so much heat 75 watts is going to put out. So yeah, this really is overkill, but there we go. That said, the noise, or and this, I, I just want to say this is not something that I've personally tested, actually physically tested, it because I don't, I just don't have the instruments for it. it. But I have read that this stays at around 24 decibels, even under full load. And I have my case open when testing it, and really, I didn't hear it. I, my CPU fans, like I could hear that just about, and I couldn't, could not hear this at all. So yeah, I'm inclined to believe them. Uh, it supports the usual NVIDIA technology, GPU boost, uh, physics, FXTA, TXAA, etc, etc. I should say, it, while it has support for G-Sync, you can't actually use G-Sync with it at the moment because G-Sync only works over the display port. So yeah, there's only one thinking of buying one of these and then oh, I'll attach to my G-Sync monitor. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Though again, I think there's a price, there's like kind of people looking to buy a card such as this at this price point aren't going to be having a G-Sync monitor. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Let me know if I'm wrong, but, you know, I don't think I am on that. 
Another very strange, a very strange and bizarre thing is there is no SLI support. You'll notice there's no connector over the top, and it's not like AMD that use the, the PCI Express lane together. This just doesn't have any support for SLI at all. So, yeah. I, I have no explanation for you for that. I don't know why. So, yeah, I can only guess just as well, just as, well as you can, to be honest. Uh, the reference design of this does state on NVIDIA's website that it supports up to four monitors, though this one, MSI, state that it can only support up to two monitors. So, there we go. I mean, I used it with two monitors. I always use two monitors, but again, I think, again, it's a price point thing. I don't think people looking to buy a graphics card for this amount of money are going to be using three monitors at a time. I mean, again, maybe I'm wrong, but there we go. Okay, so let's talk about overclocking this card. Now, many people have said that this this card, or not this particular card, but you know, the 750 Ti in general overclocks in a different way. So it's limited, they say it's limited by the power, and when it go, when you try and push the overclock so high, it just completely reduces itself back to stock levels. To, so there's no, haven't got the power for that. And okay, this is quite awkward. I've, I tried overclocking this card, I did not run into that at all. I mean, to cut a long story short, if you look at MSI Afterburner here, I'll just bring the graphic up onto the screen for you right here. Uh, yeah, it's an absolute maximum. The memory's not quite at maximum, but the GPU clock was absolutely at maximum. Yeah, this, and I had nothing. There, there was no throttling in it. Yeah, I mean, I was using Unigen Heaven to run it. I mean, maybe that's not the most like intensive benchmark I could use. Maybe if it really, really pushed it hard, it would go. It would do that. But I have. In none of the games that I tested or this did I ever get any reduction was it ever exactly the same number as when I did, did the test of stock so yeah make of that what you will I should say when I tried to push the memory up to about 6600 megahertz it, it did start glitching on me and it did like crash out a little bit which again like people have not said that happens everyone all the reviews I've read are saying oh they've run into things like when they're putting the power up and it's gone boom, straight back down to stock. Mine didn't do that, it started to glitch. So yeah, I think actually I might, for once in my life, I might have actually been lucky with the graphics card and got one that's pretty decent. Okay, so with the actual overclock itself, I'd love to tell you exactly what it was, but I was using Afterburner and com uh, Combust something, whatever it's called, that comes with the Afterburner software. Uh, and I was also using GPU Z, unfortunately, on like the four different things that can tell me what the GPU clock is at, they've all told me them differently. So yeah, if you look here, here is the graphic from the combustion or whatever it's called software. And yeah, so we'll say that that's what it was at, which is pretty damn high, pretty damn high to be perfectly honest. I mean, I wasn't sure. I was like, is that right? Is that really right? But again, all I can say is after burning was on maximum, I didn't have any crashing. And I had, once you see the benchmarks, you'll see that, yeah. We had some good results. Okay, and lastly on the overclocking, the fan speed never got above 32%. So yeah, completely silent really. I mean, again, that's because this is overkill for a chip this small and all of that. And the temps got up to 51 degrees maximum, which again is the, mostly down to this cooler, I think. But I haven't seen many reviews that say it goes any higher of any other cards. Uh, Nvidia state on their website that it can go up to 95 degrees, so we are a long, long way away from that. Okay, so now the benchmarks. Now I would like to say this is just stock against overclocked for this card only. I will compare it with the R7-260X, which I've done a video on before. But yeah, I'll retest these both together on the same system in exactly the same conditions with the newest drivers and all that, so for absolute fairness. So yeah, and I wanted to keep like the AMD NVIDIA war away from this video. I'll make a separate one for that and you guys can just go crazy. Okay, so many people have commented on the 7850K video that the writing is too small in the graphs. Now I did actually, I've actually fixed that already in the overclock one, but I don't think people watch that one as well. So yeah, I, don't worry, the, the writing is much bigger in the graphs now. And yeah, if you have anything anything to add on to that, please do let me know. Over like, please stop telling me it's too small. I know. <sighs> yeah, uh, all of these benchmarks are run in conjunction with an i seven forty seven seventy k at stock with sixteen gigabytes of G Skill Trident X memory at six at sixteen hundred. It's not a sixteen hundred at twenty four hundred megahertz. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
Okay, so yeah, there we go. As you saw, it can play a pretty decent amount of games on ultra settings. And um, that was a, quite a surprise to me. I was expecting it to be on like very high and things like that. Uh, maybe even just high or something like that. And the overclocking added on a like a really a good amount of frames per second for an overclock. Most noticeably, Tomb Raider got an 8 frames per second difference. And while that can't even be accounted to me being a crap gamer, like some of the other ones could be, because it is just a standard test that I open it, run it, and there we go, I get the result at the end. I should say Crisis 3, while it only had 3 frames per second added onto it, I think that could be somewhat limited by its 128-bit bus for the memory, so that might be bottlenecking a little bit and stopping it having a much bigger improvement. But again, Crisis 3 is like pretty intense, so I wouldn't be playing that on Ultra on a card like this anyway. But it, it will play on very high, on very high. It's not far away from 30 frames per second. I mean, if you're willing to play at 30 frames per second. So. Okay, so overall, this card has very good performance, very good temperatures, and in it is insanely quiet. So yeah, if that's what you're after, then this could be the card for you, or maybe some of the Maxwell ones in the future. And talking about the future, NVIDIA... What's exciting about this, this particular card, is still a 28 nanometer manufacturing process. When they shrink this to 20, I mean, 60 watts for this amount of performance. Can you imagine what the 880 Ti is gonna be like? I mean, it's just gonna, just boom. The headroom in video have got to just add on a bit more power consumption, but because it's naturally very low on this architecture, in Wow, the sky's the limit, so yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. I don't want to sound like an NVIDIA fanboy, I mean, I run an AMD card, which has insane power consumption, and like, I have another two sitting over there. So yeah, I know people are going to say, NVIDIA fanboy, AMD fanboy, but you know, I like both of them, so I, and I use both of them, I've got like four systems, so I've got two NVIDIA and two AMD cards, so there we go. A few other things I do want to mention about this in general is... For an overclock version, the memory doesn't come overclocked at all, which is, is pretty bizarre, really. I mean, because it uses Samsung memory, which can be, which is like rated for six thousand megahertz, six gigahertz, but it's actually it's, it's five thousand four hundred megahertz. But I mean, I easily overclocked it to six thousand five hundred. So there we go. I mean, there's a few things like that on this card that kind of makes you think, what? What they do that? Also. Currently, at the time of making this video anyway, like their Pirates Heroes and Spiders and nothing like that, and there's no game deals available with this card, so... Yeah, I mean, I'm sure NVIDIA will address that in the end. I mean, it has only just come out. I mean, AMD were the same when they released their new newer cards. They didn't have the game deals available for them straight away, so yeah, I expect NVIDIA to do something about that. It's also worth noting that the Asus DirectCU2 also comes with a cooler this size, their DirectCU2 cooler, but they include an extra 6-pin power connector at the top that allows you that headroom to get extra overclocking. So yeah, while this particular card is limited with no SLI and no, you can't use G-Sync with it and there's no external power connector to overclock with it, it still does have very good performance, very low power consumption and very low noise. So if you could squeeze something like this into a small form factor PC or say a Steam machine, then yeah, you could be having a very, very good gaming experience. Okay guys, thank you very much for watching. Now let me know in the comments, what do you think of Nvidia leaving out SLI for this card? Do you, do you think they've missed a trick for that? Uh, and also MSI not including another power connector in here to go with the big cooler that they've included on it. Would that affect your decision to buy a card like this? Or are you willing to make that trade off for like, the lower power consumption and lower noise? Let me know that, I would be very interested to know. Okay, once again, thank you guys very much for watching, liking and sharing. It is absolutely appreciated and I will see you guys next time.